Hello and welcome to the third and final beginner tutorial for Shader Sandwich. My name is Sean and as usual I'll be taking you through this one. So today we're going to be starting from scratch and creating a really cool looking shader. This crazy looking lava glow shader. It's got depth, it's got movement, it's got it all. Well, yeah. Okay, well let's get going. So, I'm just going to open up Shader Sandwich as usual. And I'm going to dock in my preview window. Alright, so we're going to be starting from scratch this time, so just hit new shader. New. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add the texture. So add a new layer into the albedo, and set it to be a texture resource. Then, as usual, just click the exclamation mark, and yes. Just like in the previous parts. Okay, so we're going to select the ash cracked texture. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you what this texture consists of. So if we have a look down here, you can see, first off, obviously there's the red, green, blue, which looks really nice, it looks cool. But the alpha channel is also interesting. Basically, I've got the lava parts being completely transparent, and the ash parts being completely opaque. So this way they're separated out, and we can use this within the shader. Alright, well let's continue going. So already this looks kind of cool, but we can make it look a lot better. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer into the specular, and set it to be black. At least for now, because it just helps add more contrast to it. So, what we can do is we can make the lava parts really pop out by making them glow. So, just like in the last tutorial, we're going to go into our passes and enable emission. Now if we go back to layers, we'll have our new emission layer channel. So what we can do is if we want the lava parts to glow, we can actually copy paste the layer from the albedo into the emission. Just right click on the layer and hit copy, and then right click in the emission and click paste. And there we go. It's not quite what we want though because the ash parts are glowing too. So this is where we can begin to use that alpha channel. So the thing is, we only want it to blend in the lava parts, whereas we want the ash to stay black. So to do this, we can actually head over to our blending modes, and click use alpha. What this does is it factors in the alpha when blending. So an alpha value of 0 will make it completely transparent at that part, an alpha value of 1 will make it opaque. And obviously there can be values in between. So let's click use alpha. Now you'll notice it's done the exact opposite of what we want, and this is because the alpha channel is inverted. However, we can fix this just by going into the effects panel. Add the effect color invert. So what this does is it inverts all the colors. One minus the color. Now, obviously currently it's just affecting the colors, whereas we want it to invert the alpha channel. So that's what this button is for, this A. By default, it affects the red, green, and blue color channels. If we click it once, it affects all the color channels now, and if we click it one more time, it affects just the alpha channel. And there we go, now we have what we want, just the lava channels glowing quite nicely. So the next thing we can do to add a little bit of animation and interest into it, we can make the lava parts dim and glow over time, kind of animate and move. So to do this, let's add another layer into the emission. Now, we're going to set this layer type to be procedural Perlin noise. So that looks like this. So the idea is to have the noise multiply onto the emission, so it darkens different parts, and then we'll animate it across the object. So first let's set the blend mode to multiply, like we did in part 1. So see the dark parts make it go darker, and the bright parts stay the same. So now to make it animate. So we're going to go down into effects, and we're going to add the effect mapping offset. So what this does is it lets us offset the mapping. So as you can see if we increase the X, it moves across. But how are we going to animate it? Well, first thing we're going to do is add an input for the X offset. So what we can do, as I mentioned in part 1, is we can actually animate this input. But to do this, we're going to have to go into a new panel. Down the bottom, click on Inputs, and a bunch of new stuff will pop up. Hooray! So this is the Inputs panel, and this is where all the inputs that we've created over the course of this series have vanished off to. So here you can change things like their name, you can change fallbacks, change their default values, and of course animate them. So down the bottom, you'll see our new X offset input. If we turn off visible, which is what allows it to be visible within the materials inspector, we can then replace it with something else, such as the time. So set it to time, basic, standard. And now you see as the time increases, the X offset increases, and it moves across the screen. Pretty cool. Finally, we can enhance the effect a little bit. If we go back into layers, we can add the color contrast effect. And what this will let us do if we increase it, is it will make the dark parts darker and the bright parts brighter. And there we go, it looks pretty good. So that looks alright, but it's lacking the depth that real lava cracks would have. Not that I know, I've never seen them, but I think they look pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to add more depth into this by having the lava parts be inset. 
Now, to actually model this would take so much time and thousands and thousands and thousands of polygons. It just wouldn't be practical. But we can actually create this step within the shader itself. To do this, we have to go back into our passes and enable something. So go into passes and scroll down to the bottom. You'll see an area called POM, which is Parallax Occlusion Mapping. What this does is, using a bunch of mathematical calculations, it can simulate depth. So if we turn this on, you'll notice immediately it looks kind of funny. And as we increase the height, you'll see it looks like that part is inset. Obviously it doesn't look right, because we haven't told Shader Sandal to which parts are high and which parts are deep. But we'll do that in a sec. So here we have the height, which defines how far in the deepest parts are, and the quality, which defines the quality of it. I'm going to set this up to 25. And I'll keep the height at 0.1. I find it works pretty well. Alright, so if we head back into our layers, you'll see we now have a new layer channel, height. So what we can do again, we can simply copy-paste our albedo channel into the height. So right-click, paste. And it immediately works. Pretty cool. You'll notice down the bottom of the height that it has the ability to use the red, green, blue, or alpha channel. This is because the height is just a single value, not a color, and so we can actually make it use any color channel. However, in this case, we want to use the alpha channel, because the dark parts are the deepest, so that way the lava parts are inset, and the ash parts are the brightest, so they remain on the surface. And there we go, we have our new depth. Alright, so already it's looking pretty cool, but can we make it look better? Yes, we can. So this is where we're going to go back to our specular. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the specular just a little bit, up to maybe 20 or 30, should look nice, and then I'm going to go back into passes and increase the shine. Obviously this doesn't look very realistic, but it certainly looks nice. Now finally, to really sell that parallax depth, what we can do is add a normal map. So, so in shaders, to calculate the lighting, it uses a bunch of things, and one of these values are called normals. Normals are simply directional vectors. So, in models that are created out of vertices, each of these vertices have a direction. For example, this face here has the direction of pointing outwards, like that. This face here has the direction of pointing that way. It uses this to help calculate lighting, so that way faces that are looking towards the light become brighter, while faces that are turned away become darker. Normal mapping lets us alter these normals across the surface, so that way we can make it pretend that these parts are actually looking away from the light, rather than in front, to really sell that depth effect. So if we head back into our layers, you'll see a channel called normals, which is always there. What we can do is copy-paste the albedo channel once again into the normals, and already it will look kind of funny, and this is because we haven't passed in a normal map. Normal maps look like these weird blue things, like this. However, in Shader Sandwich, we can convert it to a normal map. So what we can do is add the effect, conversion, normal map. And immediately it will take effect. So now if we adjust some of these, like for example increasing the height, you can really see it start to sell that depth effect. So you can play around with the size and the height just to get the right settings for your texture. But yeah, that's the idea. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Alright, well we're done. That is our Molten Lava Shader. Well congratulations, you've finished the beginner set of tutorials, and you're well on your way to becoming a Shader Ninja or something. Well, hopefully you've learned enough to get started. Um, the main thing now is just to experiment. Experiment a lot. Shader Sandwich is just built for experimentation. Add new layers, experiment with all the different types, there are plenty here. And most importantly, just have fun. Make something that looks cool. Of course, there are other tutorials out there, so feel free to search those up. I'll be adding a bunch now as well, so yeah. If you're ever looking for a specific effect, feel free to check those out. Alright, well, thanks for watching. See you guys later.